What we've got here is some brand new laboratories that have been constructed just recently and they were constructed with funding from the University of Sheffield and the analytical equipment that you see around here was, was brought uh, with, with funding from the EPSRC. Most of the, the equipment in here is to analyse proteins in particular and so we have mass spectrometers, liquid chromatographs um, and gas chromatographs as well to, to, to look for these particular biological macromolecules. And so what we have here are some guys working in, in gas chromatography where they're looking at, at various biological molecules present in environmental samples and we also use this to look at, at, at other small molecules that are present in biological samples. What we have in these, these two large instruments here are, are instruments that are very much focused at looking at, at proteins hopefully involved in some kind of disease. And what we're focusing at the moment is on colon cancer, prostate cancer, um, diseases um, in, in the mouth, so dentist, dental problems, these kinds of things. And we're using both these tools here in particular to quantify or to try and understand how many proteins are present in a particular cell and if there are differences between proteins in one disease state versus another to try and understand what, how, what their role might be in, in, say, progression of a disease like prostate cancer, for example. So what they're designed to do, essentially, is to, is to measure the mass of particular proteins and that helps us to identify what they are. And so using genomic sequence databases, we're able to understand in detail what the proteins are, what their structures are, hopefully, and how much their abundance has changed in uh, response to particular disease condition. And so that's really what, what we're trying to do with these particular pieces of equipment here. So what these guys are trying to do here is we're trying to measure these proteins and, and, and for that it requires a large amount of computational power to really look at the spectra because it's very, very complicated. Because what happens in the mass spectrometer is, is the proteins or, the, or, the, or their products enter the mass spectrometer and they fragment and you've got to look at this fragmentation of the proteins and this helps you identify what they are. And obviously it requires quite a bit of computational work to reassemble these protein fragments again to try and understand how they fit together to form a, a proper structure. So that's what these guys are doing here. I think it's very, very important that we use techniques like this because they're high throughput and they're very, very accurate. So it allows us to look at lots of protein samples from patients at once. Because to do this properly, you need to, to be able to, to look at a large number of patients so that you get some statistical relevance that you really are pinpointing the, the cause of a disease and not some artefact. And so with techniques like this and with modern mass spectrometry techniques, we're able to really look at large numbers of samples and to get a, a really good idea about what's happening and hopefully find out the, the real cause behind a disease. So this allows us to, to really pinpoint earlier a disease progression so that hopefully we can intervene the key thing that's involved in all of this, of course, is, that, is the investment from both the EPSRC and the University of Sheffield in allowing us to be able to do this kind of research. So this mass spectrometer, for example, was funded under the Chelsea Initiative from the EPSRC, and this is a, a key piece of instrumentation that's allowing us to do this, this research with colleagues in the medical school. It's very important because actually just recently we've been talking to a lot of pharmaceutical companies and enzyme companies in the UK about how we can use the same techniques that we've applied for the medical problems, can we apply them to making products like medicines or, or industrial biocatalysts or whatever it might be. So I think it, it, the understanding that we've been able to get from these working with medical systems it has a broader appeal into industrial type applications as well and I think that's very, very important. That We've been able to also attract substantial funding from the BBSRC and that's mostly for more industrial biotechnology problems rather than solving medical problems. So it's really, really quite broad in terms of biofuels, obviously an important problem for mankind. A particular partner we've been involved with in that is a small company called Autis Energy based in Oxford and they've been helping us with some funding in terms of EPSRC case studentships and direct money to look at new sources for energy and we're applying synthetic biology tools and metabolic engineering tools to help make that happen. It's a very multidisciplinary institute so you know, the students that are working here are from all kinds of disciplines, chemists, biochemists, chemical engineers, medics, these kinds of different disciplines all working together within this Umbrella Institute and I think that's been really, really powerful at letting us solve problems that as a single discipline we wouldn't have been able to solve. It's the understanding, the analytics, the mathematical modelling and the philosophical way that we approach the problem can be similar each time and I think this gives us a solid platform from which to build on to be able to tackle these different problems.